Have you ever considered the possibility that you're living in a simulation? Perhaps after watching Neo take the red pill and learning the truth that he had spent all of his life hooked up to an alien supercomputer, you started wondering the same about your own life. What truth? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage. Born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. How could you possibly tell if all you ever experienced was within the simulation? You would have no way of comparing it to anything else. Some people take weird occurrences during ordinary life as proof of the simulation. The Reddit forum Glitch in the Matrix with nearly a million users is home to those sorts of speculations. But you need not be a sci-fi obsessed nerd or suffering from delusions to believe to live in a simulation. According to Oxford philosopher Nick Bostrom, it is actually reasonable to assume that the world we are living in is not the fundamental reality, but rather one of many computer simulated worlds. In his argument he presents three alternate possibilities, one of which is very likely to be true. The first possibility is that we're not living in a simulation, because no intelligent life manages to stay alive long enough to develop the necessary technology to produce lifelike simulations. Meaning, there aren't any sufficiently powerful simulations in existence, because civilizations die out or self-destruct before reaching their full technological potential. The danger is serious and real, and we must not underestimate it. The second possibility is that humanity will at some point reach the stage where it has the capacity to run lifelike simulations. One look at the difference between the video games of the 1980s and the astoundingly realistic 3D games we have today suggests this isn't mere speculation. As long as this progress continues, even if significantly slower compared to the incredible speed so far, it seems guaranteed that we'll reach this stage at some point. In the absence of some global catastrophe that sets us back to the dark ages, sooner or later these kinds of powerful simulations will be possible. But perhaps we simply decide not to use this technology. So that is the second possibility. We don't live in a simulation, because despite having the capability, we don't make use of it. The third possibility is that humanity does make use of it. And there are countless simulated worlds to the one and only original real world. If it's the third possibility that is true, it is far more likely that we find ourselves in one of the simulated worlds and not in the base reality that gave rise to all simulations. It would seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. So Tell me what's wrong with that argument. Is he the truly fascinating thing to think about is how or if we can ever come into contact with the fundamental reality and with the programmers of our simulation. The creator or creators of our simulation would probably know what our ultimate purpose is and what it all means. They would be in effect like a god.